uh, actually have something written so that we can all discuss it. I, I went ahead and wrote the section on the mayor. Gosh, it's almost been less than half of it now. So, uh, apologize. I'm still uh, trying to get through this myself. So I'll, I'll read, and I've already made one correction because we made this correction someplace else. Uh, under eligibility, election, and term, item A, eligibility, and I guess we'll approve these the same way we did all the rest of them by specific item, and that would be eligibility this time, or for this one. Um, and it's going to be a little bit different because of the residency requirement, but I'm going to read it. The mayor shall have established primary residency in the city for at least two years immediately preceding the election. And that's different from your version, which your version just has been a resident of the city. So, uh, and, and the whole reason for that is to make sure that he's living here, not just having a residence in the city. What word did you use? Uh, shall have established primary residency in the city. Okay. Other than that, everything else is the same. The mayor shall be a qualified voter of the city and shall remain a resident and qualified voter of the city during the entirety of their term. No person shall be elected or appointed to the office of the mayor who is not a citizen of the United States or who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes or who is guilty of forfeiture or delphication <laughs> during the entire term, entirety of their term. Yes. Yes. All right. I have a question. And that, that is written in some other terms, too, so that, that's where it's taken from. Yes. Uh, the, I, the definition for that. Yeah, I'm looking at up. I had a question. Uh, shall we remain a primary resident? Should we put primary resident? Yeah. Well, no, she's talking. <coughs> Defecation. Now, used in law. <laughs> Misappropriation of money or funds held by an official trustee or other fiduciary. Two, the sum misappropriated. Okay. Sandra, Ted was asking for the de definition of defalcation. Sandra? Ted was, sorry, Ted was asking for the definition. Yeah, okay. Um, misappropriation of money or funds held by an official trustee or other fiduciary or the sum misappropriated. And Lisa corrected me because I missed where it says remaining resident. She, she said remaining primary resident. I will accept that. Is it true? Yes. Of 
All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, please take a vote. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Jim Asia? Yes. Malcolm McDonough? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Uh, section passes 4.1a, uh, 11 to 0. Uh, I'll read section B regarding election and terms, and I think this should answer your question, Sandy. Okay. At the regular municipal election, the mayor shall be elected by the qualified voters of the city at large to serve a four year term as provided in Article 7, Section 17. And that's a future article that we've got outlined. So if that number does change, we can change it as needed. So. Any questions on that one? Yes, Greg? I just bring it for discussion. Is there any interest in putting term limits on the mayor, the office of mayor, same as the president, the mayor, and the governor of the state of Missouri? I, I debated that when I wrote this, and in our community, I just uh, personally I felt that. Uh, if you have a good mayor, you want to keep a good mayor. And whether or not you uh, say two consecutive terms, but he can serve for however many terms he wants, as long as he breaks it up, that didn't make sense to me because if he's doing a good job and he's keep being consistent, you can lose that consistency by letting him take off four years. And if he's doing well, you keep him in. If, if he's not doing well, the voters can vote him out. I mean, or his or her. <laughs> yes. It's the voter's option. If he's not doing a good job, you know how to pull the vote. Yes. So don't handle it. Exactly. You know, so I think the voters again have the option. So that, that was that was the only reason why that I mean that's what I opted for on this, and that was my reason. Okay. I don't hear a, a lot of people shouting great ideas, so let's just move on that. I need a motion to approve. Second. That was Mary Jane. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? We'll take a vote. Please read it first, though. Four point one B election and term. At the regular municipal election, the mayor shall be elected by the qualified voters of the city at large. Should the city be capitalized? Of the city. City at large to serve a four year term as provided in article whatever it's going to be, section whatever it's going to be. Any other further discussion? We'll take a vote. Jim Asia? Yes. Lisa Emerson, yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Michael McDonald? Yes. And again, I'm, I'm in trying to stay consistent with the MML and other chapters, so when I go through these, I took great pains into looking at quite a few different uh, charters to make sure I try to have it all correct. But 4.2 is uh, compensation. And it reads, the Board of Aldermen shall determine the annual compensation of the mayor by ordinance, but no ordinance changing any such compensation shall become effective for the mayor until the commencement of a new term in office, nor shall be made within 180 days prior to a municipal election. The mayor may receive reasonable reimbursement or actual or necessary expenses as approved by the Board of Aldermen. For discussion. Yes, I, I just like to comment this. This um, seems consistent with uh, the compensation piece we had with uh, the other members of the board of all. And I make a motion to approve. Second. Any other further discussion? Please would you reread and we'll take a vote. Now, I have asked Lisa to make sure that everything goes into the minutes and everything, so it's going to take her a little bit longer to coordinate, so just we'll give her some time to put everything together. Yes, it's 4.2 compensation. 
4.2, compensation. The Board of Aldermen shall determine the annual compensation of the mayor by ordinance, but no ordinance changing such compensation shall become effective for the mayor until the commencement of a new term in office, nor shall be made within 180 days prior to a municipal election. The mayor may receive reasonable reimbursement for actual and necessary expenses as approved by the Board of Aldermen. Janet Everson? Yes. Gray Walters? Yes. Jim Azure? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Mark, uh, Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mary Jane Busker? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Lisa Everson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Harper? Yes. All right, we'll move on to section 4.3, duties and powers. And we'll again separate these out as A, B, and let me see the next one. C, uh, C and E, so <coughs> depending on what it is. <coughs> All right, duties and powers. A, general duties. The mayor shall be recognized as the head of the city government for all legal and ceremonial purposes, shall have no administrative duties beyond serving as the Board of Aldermen Chairman. The mayor shall annually present to the Board of Aldermen and to the people of the city information as to the affairs of the city along with any recommendations that he or she has for the improvements of the city and its affairs. The mayor shall have the power to remit fines and forfeitures and to grant reprieves and pardon <coughs> offenses arising under the ordinances of the city with approval of the Board of Aldermen. Written notice of such action shall be made public at the next regular Board of Aldermen meeting. Board discussion. We have a motion. Right? I, I make a motion to adopt. Right. Great. Right. Second. Any other discussion? There are some changes to what we normally do in here. Is that correct? Some minor ones, yes. Suggestion that I don't have this, but I'm thinking about that. Is, would it be 
uh, one of his general duties, or would it be under a board duty, though? Would we amend, or maybe read B later, and then... Yeah, I'm not sure if necessary, but... Well, I, I think maybe you can look at the power as the power to initiate parts of power, maybe, as opposed to have the power of the You know, if, if you're going to have a system where the, the, the mayor has to can grant a pardon at the consent of the board, the power, I guess, should be to, to initiate pardon. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, what it, that's technically what it would be, though. I mean, cause, yeah, you're right. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be unilateral anymore at that point. The executive, the executive authority to grant pardon is just that. It's not a legislative function. It's an executive function. You either give him the power or, or you don't. Right. Right. Did I have seen that first and then go to Lisa? I, I was just going to <coughs> express my opinion. And I have never understood why one man or woman should have the power to forgive laws. It sounds almost medieval. Like you have a king that we're elected and not a mayor. It, 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 to me, it, it makes no sense. And I do like, perhaps there's a good reason. He has a good reason. He can say he's got the power to, he's got the only, in fact, he's the only person who would have the authority to begin the process. It's just that it would have to pass muster of the board of aldermen to be approved. So I, I would agree with it the way that it is written here. Lisa? I, I agree. I, I... I don't have a strong opinion, but uh, it sounds good. Otherwise, we'd have to make sure it was a 
on public record of some sort, so that he's not just granting all sorts of, you know, <laughs> um, reprieves and pardons. But, um, but more to your question, Ted, uh, how would you fix it? Would you just take out that whole sentence? Is that your suggestion? Um, and do you want to make that amendment? To, to fix it, I would take out that half of the sentence that says with approval of the Board of Law. Right, that's what I meant, sorry. Do you want to make a formal amendment? I'm sorry, we have to go.
and you want to keep this, the full sentence before that? Yeah. Do you want to keep the full sentence before that? Can, can you please read out the last two or so? Well, I mean, if it's his amendment, I'd like to make sure it's correct for them. Assuming 
education. I mean, to me, what I'm, what I'm hearing is there's a general consensus that we should at least notify the board. And what I might also add is place on file with the city, in the city clerk's office, you know, as public record. I mean, we have that to the end of it. Okay, now we, we have, uh, well, we have, a, we have a motion and a second. Um, can he personally admit his own? Because it's been seconded, it belongs to the whole board now, so we have to get a general consensus to add the amended, amended, amended to the amended, and then vote on that, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, otherwise, if there's somebody who disagrees to adding that it should be on file, for instance, then we have to go back and then read, like we did with Michael's. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a moment on Michael's <laughs> amendment. <laughs> All right, let's all vote against you. Like with my motion last time. Um, so we're voting to drop off everything starting with the word with approval from the Board of Aldermen, but notice it is blah, blah, blah. We're voting to drop that part off of general duties. Jim Major. No. Janet Emerson. No. Michael McDonough. No. Steve Gunther. No. Sandra Harbaugh. <laughs> Sandra Harbaugh. No. Mary Jane Nuffusker. I think no. Grant no. Walters. No. Ted Bowman. No. Vacation for Lisa Emerson, Charlotte Nelson. No. Jason Green. No. All right, I'm going to make a motion then to leave that in, but add the words after meeting and keep on or and place on file in the office of the city clerk. Second. Second. starting from the mayor's shall. Okay. The mayor shall have the power to remit fines and forfeitures and to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses arising under the ordinance of the city. Written notice of such action shall be made public at the next regular board of aldermen meeting and be placed on file in the office of the city clerk. shall be recognized as head of the city government for all legal and ceremonial purposes, shall have no administrative duties beyond serving as Board of Aldermen Chairman. The Mayor shall annually present to the Board of Aldermen and to the people of the city information as to the affairs of the city, along with any recommendations that they have for the improvement of the city and its affairs. The Mayor shall have the power to remit fines and forfeitures and to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses arising under the ordinance of the city. Written notice of such action shall be made public at the next regular Board of Aldermen meeting and be placed on file in the office of the City Clerk. Jason Green? Yes. Mark, oh, sorry. Mary Jane Van Busker? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Jim Asia? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. We need to go back to the original one, the very original one, where it's actually in there, but no, or is, we don't have the same.
We have to go back to the motion of the motion. The main motion on the floor was to approve 4.3. So we have to go back to the motion. So in this case, we're going back to the original one that I read that had with approval of the Board of Aldermen. And so since we've already passed everything else, then our vote would be no for this one. Unless you don't want to change it. Philosophical All right, this was the motion made by Greg Walters and Jen Emerson seconded. Charlotte Nelson. Jason Green? Yes. Okay. Craig Walters? Yes. We're voting for the old version. We're voting for the original version. We did. Why are we voting for the old one? I'm doing it on a philosophical reason. You amended the motion on the floor. More important, you amended the motion on the floor. Census thing here is all about whether or not we give the alderman or the mayor the power of veto. Uh, Go ahead, Jason. Um, I just want to get into it real quick because I know you want to talk to veto, and I just had a separate question though. If you don't okay, know. go ahead. Um, 
Um, and I wanted to get Sandy's input. Um, being that you're on planning and zoning, do you, yeah, do, do you feel that this is a, that the wording on the last sentence is like I guess compliant with the way we do things in terms of making appointments to? I mean, I, I guess what I guess I'm asking is technically is that I guess the, it would be a commission I imagine, so I guess it would fit within that. Is that would that be your opinion as well? That that suffice for that committee? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just at the end, you had all Board of Aldermen, subcommittees, advisory boards, commissions, and liaisons. So I think, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious what your opinion is, if you feel like that would suffice. And CRA has that right to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure that you feel the wording was right, though. Yeah, yeah. the has yeah. the right to do that. It's generally done at the end of whatever term that mm -hmm. they have on those committees. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike wants to deal with the advice end. Um, well, many times the Board of Aldermen will give a nomination to the to the mayor for particular committees. And so, they will be asked. yeah, yeah, like we'll be either asked or like, sometimes we're asked, sometimes it's just like, hey, there's a the spot and you, you, you recommend somebody. Okay. So. Well, if there's an open spot unless somebody resigns, he has, he or she has to say, I don't want that person on here anymore. Does, now that I don't know
somewhere where you choose right. the table. And that's yeah. What we think. Yeah. You guys can decide what you think, and we'll take a vote one way or another. Uh, but I, and instead of somebody making a motion one way or another, let's resolve this now and then make a motion. I'll, I'll just I'll throw it out there. I, I think you should have a veto power. There's there's a means by which vetoes can be overridden. That is. It. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree um, with Mr. Bowman. Um, if you think about it, um, if you put in, you know, a, in there's a section C in here, if if we do have veto power, but it mentions, I'm not going to jump ahead too much on this, but it mentions it takes two thirds of the majority of the board to override a veto. So technically, we're talking about if that wasn't put in place, we had a veto override of two thirds of the board, the mayor technically is only vetoing something that, you know, a vote of six, if you think about it. You know, because everything's seven or more, we would override that. Right. So that's at least the way I look at that. All right, so I'm very willing to take out the words not and leave it as shall have veto power. Is everybody in consensus with that? Yes, Lisa. Um, my problem with the veto power is that um, the mayor would theoretically have it at a board of aldermen meeting anyway, as his own vote to break a tie. If or that the majority of the aldermen did not want something to pass, or wanted something to pass, why would one elected official be able to negate everything that was agreed upon by a larger group? Yes, Jim. Um, the answer to my answer would never be because it goes back to being consistent with um, checks and balances. That's what we do at the federal level, what we do at the state level, that's what we do at the state level. All right, I, I heard another click before I heard yours, Lisa, so Jason. Oh, yeah, I mean, and I, I see, I see, you know, the, both sides on this. I, I just feel like technically you're just negating, you're really negating a vote. When, when you do this, I there is a system of checks and balances that I think is necessary. I mean, here's the deal: um, the mayor is the only at-large candidate we have in the city. So, I mean, I do he has to have, in my opinion, uh, and obviously a little more power than just any board member. You know, I was elected of my ward one fifth of Ray Town. I get my vote, but he's only. It's, it's not like this is that great of a power. In It's not only just, it's not about power, it's, it's, about, it's about maintaining the balance between those people that make the laws we all have to live under and, and, and making sure that those things that are, I mean, if you've got a 6-6 six, six vote and the thing gets vetoed, there's, there's, no, there's no consensus there to begin with. And in, most of the times I've seen that happen. if the mayor um, doesn't veto it or just lets it hang for six and a half days or something to that effect. If, it, I, if I remember right, emergency ordinance required two thirds anyway. Yeah. Are we writing it that way? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> and so with the veto power, that is, I guess, any decisions made by the Board of Aldermen for ordinances and resolutions, correct? Anything they vote on. Anything that the Board of Aldermen votes on can be vetoed by the mayor with yeah. 
because, okay, so if the Board of Aldermen passes something and it's a resolution and then the mayor doesn't like it, he can veto it and it doesn't go forward. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but, but then there still is the, but with the privilege to appoint remove, that's on the advice and consent of the majority board of all for the subcommittee's advisory board's commission to liaisons. So if there is something that the alderman bring up that's a very strong issue, they pass it, and it doesn't have to be passed 82 or whatever, the, the mayor, if by using this power, can say, no, I don't agree with it. No, I'm not signing it. Veto. Well, veto is a positive action. Right. It's, it's a veto. It's not a not signing. It's right. Veto. And the, the only way that it really applies is a 75 vote. Right. So, so, yeah, so the only, the only way it applies, I mean, if you put in, okay, let's say we put in to have a veto power, but then there's another section where we have to talk about how to override a veto. So, and that was, it's generally speaking, throughout the United States, two thirds of whatever the bar right. is. Right. So, pretty much what we're saying is if, if, if something got seven votes on the Board of Aldermen, it's veto proof. Oh, it's veto proof? Yeah. That's not saying that. Here. It, well, it, I know it will the next session. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that, the, okay. next, the next session, okay. Okay. We'll, okay. the last right. two thirds, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. yeah. The reason you don't see it very often anymore is the same one. Got to break a 5 5 vote, it wouldn't make sense for him to vote yes and then veto it. Right, that's why I was wondering. Okay, all right. Mr. Chairman, yes. Yeah. Also, I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm fairly certain that the mayor does not sign a resolution, but only ordinances. Because the ordinances are in itself the laws of the city, where resolutions aren't. Well, it's the budget. I mean, budget. It's by ordinance. It's an ordinance. So when we when we vote on budget items, for example, already approved by budget, the budget has to be approved by ordinance where it's read twice. But when a department comes back to us and they want, we still have to prove that expenditure we do on our resolution. It's already been approved by ordinance. So if we get, if for example the uh, public works department puts in the budget they're going to do $50,000 in overlay. It's in the budget, it's approved, and the budget is approved. But then when they actually spend it, with the company that's going to do it, they bring it back and it's approved by resolution. And I say that because I'm, I'm almost certain as uh, Mayor Pro Tem, when I, uh, I signed uh, after the, when the, at the end of the meeting, that I would sign those. It was only the ordinances we signed, it was not resolutions. I could be wrong, but I, I think that's correct. But I haven't mentioned resolutions in the so. So I think it's, I'm just, it's only ordinances of that which means I'm law. All right, go ahead. Lisa. Just a quick question. If can we highlight that just to look at it? Is that the difference? One yeah. right twice, one or not? I'm just saying, like, under C, when we put in resolutions, just highlight it and vote on it, whichever. And then you can figure out the highlight. All right. So at this point, I'm going to reread our, well, we don't have a motion in a second. I'm going to make a motion myself to, <laughs> for 4.3 duties and powers under Section B, Board Duties. The mayor shall be a member of the Board of Aldermen capacity of chairman, residing at meetings of the Board of Aldermen, may exercise the privilege of voting, only has to break a tie, shall have veto power, shall have the privilege to appoint or remove with the advice and consent of the majority vote of the Board of Aldermen, all Board of Aldermen subcommittees, advisory boards, commissions, and liaison. Move to accept. Second. Second. Yes. That's all we did. So Ted moves to accept. I I move. You got second. 
Second. No, I moved the original when I read it. Okay. <laughs> Ted, second. Okay. Yes, Charlie. Okay, sorry about this works over the shower or not or whatever, but it just stated that the mayor only signs ordinances. That's what I thought. But he also signs resolutions because we just looked that up. So I don't know if it makes any difference. But we can require him to sign resolutions. I'm just saying currently. Yeah, he does. This is name's on the resolution page. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to throw that out there. Okay. I'm going to ask for a real simple amendment to the, what I motion and take out the word shall and may. section later, shall means they shall do it. So if he shall have veto power, that means he shall veto things, not necessarily may. Ted made the point of... I think there's a problem with the English here. It doesn't say he shall do it. It says he shall have veto power. Okay, that's fine. I'm just kidding. Okay, so that's what I said. Thank you. 
the hour and away from the Alderman to immediately call a meeting after the veto and pass it over to him. Is that what this committee wants to do? It's your choice. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying there, Jim. And, and again, that's what they do at other levels. They, they allow them to call an emergency meeting. So you might want to just take out the word break.
motion to amend, to change the plural to a singular to jive with the rest of the paragraph, so we're not confused on okay, so you're saying what's going on. A mayoral veto instead of mayoral vetoes, since we're talking about a singular veto everywhere else. And I apologize for my bad grammar originally. You, you broke up the sentence there, too, that I didn't understand. Well, but that stays in there. Yes. Okay, all right. She misunderstood. So we have a first and a second on it as written, and now we have a motion with a minor change to uh, change marital book vetoes to a marital veto. Excuse me, though. Why can't you just change the thing without having to go on a misspelling or a word? I asked if we could do that, but he said there might be somebody who didn't want it, so. Great. I mean, if we can get a whole consensus, then we don't have to vote on it. or resolution adopted by the Board of Aldermen shall be presented to the mayor for their approval. The mayor shall either sign the same or, within seven days of receipt of the ordinance or resolution, return it with a written statement of their reasons for disapproval. A mayoral veto shall be considered at the next regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen, and the Board of Aldermen may pass the ordinance or resolution over the veto by an affirmative vote of two-thirds of the entire Board of Aldermen. An ordinance or resolution passed over the veto of the mayor may not be vetoed a second time. If any ordinance or resolution be neither signed nor returned by the mayor within seven days of receipt by the mayor, the same shall be deemed approved by the mayor as if the mayor had signed it. That's what that I heard correct? The first time. Okay. Great. Do we have Jason's good. Jason's got a second. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. I know it's getting late. <laughs> Ted Bowman. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Michael McDonough. Absolutely yes. Craig Walters. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Senator Hartwell. Yes. Mary Jane Fitzgerald. Yay. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't like to get through 4.3. We only have one item left on 4.3. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move that uh, that section, uh, what is that, 3? 4.3D. 4.3D read, other duties. The mayor shall exercise such powers and perform such other duties as may be prescribed by this charter, by ordinance, or by law. Second. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? No. no. Ted Bowman. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. She has to read it first. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't go fast enough. D. Other duties. The mayor shall exercise such powers and perform such other duties as may be prescribed by this charter by ordinance or by law. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jen Emerson. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Mark McDonough. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Mr. Major. Yes. Senator Hartwell. Yes. Rachel Fibusker. Could you read it again? I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> 